Starting the first section, um, first change was the House version applied to law enforcement officers in the course of his or her official duties. Uh, the Senate has expanded that to uh, any public official made in the course of his, his or her <coughs> official duties. Um, and then they've included down at the bottom, number five, they've included a definition of what a public employee is. Um, any officer or employee of the state or a political subdivision of the state or the general court or any person otherwise performing the government function. <coughs> so they've expanded uh, the application of this bill <coughs> from, from the original House version. Uh, the second thing they've done is the House version said that uh, the person making the recording has to notify the person, in this case the officer, that they're making the recording. The Senate has somewhat changed that a little bit and said, you don't have to notify, but the recording device has to be in plain view, such that the person would know that they're being recorded. Um, so you don't actually officially have to tell the person you're recording. You have to sort of make it obvious that you're recording the public official. Um, so in other words, I, I think that would exclude, say, having some sort of recording device like a phone, but keeping it in your pocket. You'd actually have to have whatever the device out there in plain view for someone to see, so they would know that they're, they're on notice that they're being recorded um, without actually being told. So. Uh, the third thing applies to where uh, the uh, recording can be made. Uh, the House version says that the recording, the person is personally interacting with the officer or is recording the officer in a public area. Uh, the Senate has uh, expanded that a bit uh, to say that the location is on the person's private property, uh, the private property of the person who, has, uh, who is making the recording, or any other public or private space generally accessible to the public. Um, so I think that covers just about every place you could probably imagine, um, both public and private places. Um, they've made no change to uh, providing that the, the recording doesn't interfere with the, uh, the person's ability uh, to perform his or her except for the fact that the House version applies only to an officer, uh, the Senate version applies to a public official. <clears throat> And then they've added a couple of new provisions, uh, the first being that the recording uh, remains the property of the owner, and then there's a, a procedure for uh, having a copy uh, provided to the owner within 10 days of the time the property was seized. Uh, then there's the, the exception for, uh, for courtrooms, um, that these, there's nothing in this uh, law which shall be construed to permit the person to audio videotape in a courtroom or any other place within the entire court facility without the prior approval of providing, uh, presiding justice. Um, and then there's this sort of this catch-all. Because the, the Senate version expands it to public and private places, um, it says the subparagraph should not be construed to expand or contract public access to government buildings, facilities, meetings, records, blah, blah, blah. I think the point of that was that what they're trying to say is, yes, if you're in a public building, you can record, but you can't go into a place that you normally wouldn't be allowed general access to. In other words, you can't just barge into, say, the Attorney General's office and plunk it down and start recording, because you normally wouldn't have access to that place unless, say, you made an appointment, and then you wouldn't, you wouldn't have a lot of access. So I think that's sort of the, 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 that's put in there because they've expanded the areas where you can be recorded. When we first got this bill, it was very similar to what it is now from the Senate. We took out public officials. We took that piece out because there are times when public officials go into non-public for personnel reasons. I'm a welfare officer. My work is confidential. And we took that into great consideration when we were doing this bill that whenever it was, 
and we took that out. Now they've seen it in their wisdom to put it back in. And that was safeguards. I can tell you a lot of this language comes from, you, you recall, right, this was a bill that we retained from last year and worked on over the summer. It was the Glick decision, which came down from the First Circuit Court of Appeals, uh, it applied to the Massachusetts wiretapping law. A lot of this language, I know Senator Brown really worked quite quite diligently on, on expanding on, on improving the bill uh, to keep it in light of what he believed the Glick, the Glick decision required. That this was, like I said, this was his understanding of what Glick would require. Keeping in mind, of course, Glick was interpreting the Massachusetts statute. New Hampshire has a different wiretapping statute. I don't know how Glick would necessarily apply to the New Hampshire statute. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, where you said there was no change under Section uh, C of the, as amended by the Senate, if it does indeed add the word physically, as it did not. Oh, you're right. That's actually a really important uh, closing of a loophole that we foresaw, so I appreciate that they changed that. I missed that. Thank you. Representative Christ? In, in your example, wouldn't uh, their uh, item 4 cover that? Because you wouldn't have access to a non-public session, and you wouldn't have access to your private welfare meeting. You, could, you wouldn't currently have that, so you still wouldn't have it here. I think the law on non-public sessions is pretty specific. I, I think Ken's correct. And if you don't, if you are the subject of that non-public session and you want it to be public, you can say, you can just state that and it becomes public. Okay. I certainly think that's the intent of that provision is that even though the law would seem to allow greater access, it's not meant to, it's not meant to allow it necessarily. Also, as a follow-up to that same thought, under Section B, the last part of it says, or from a public or private space, generally accessible to the public. Right. So in the case of a welfare, welfare or private yeah. counseling or something like that, that's not generally accessible to the public. We'll take close the door. Same thing with a, a board meeting that's been closed. So I think it's covered here. Um, because of something I'm working on, where it says public official and so forth, or the entities of the state, would the university system of New Hampshire fall under that? Because that was created, the court, the uh, colleges and that were created a body corporate and politic by the state. I think the argument can be made that they're included. And it, uh, under 91A, it specifically mentions yeah. them I think I, as an entity open to public meetings and so forth. My, my guess would be if they're currently covered under 91A, this would certainly apply. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Uh, I just wondered about the uh, time frame. Is there any time frame in any way that says that when you want information that they have to release it within so many days or something? You know what that's part of this? You're talking about the right to know law? <clears throat> well, we're talking about uh, releasing this information, right? Am I right? We're, we're no, talking about releasing the video or the taping. Am I right? Oh, oh, you're talking so about the time frame, the like 15 days when you request it, that they release it to you. Yes. I don't know if that. I'm right. talking about. Um, is that another section? No, they they have included a provision here. This is applies to the audio video recording. Uh, they made the explicit statement that the audio or video recording of the public official shall remain the property of the owner. In the event that the property is seized, a copy shall be provided within 10 days that the property is seized. Okay. Within 10 days. Representative Rudy. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, bring me back up to date on this bill right here. What was the major reason this bill was introduced? Does anyone know? Representative Tasker, go ahead. In Weir, there was an incident of a woman with a camera, and it was taken, and they would not return it, and they charged her with a felony. 
which is obviously not the intent of the bill. We're trying to clarify. We're trying to clarify. Well, there are several instances. Right. We wouldn't be talking about this unless, without the police having charged someone with felony wiretapping, because it would have never had enough recognition or public outrage to do anything about it. But now we, obviously we know that that's not the intent of the law, and we need to clarify when and when is it not okay to record police officers and public officials in the course of their duties. And as this bill clearly lays out, just about all the time, as long as you're not interfering and as long as you're not doing this or that, it is okay to record your interaction with the police. And that's is, is this bill going to be making any major changes to what we presently have? Yes. Yes. Where are the major changes? Exactly. Yes. Where? Where are they? <laughs> Where? That's what I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm asking. Aud audio recording without yeah, their consent. I can't hear. If, if I audio record you without your consent, that's fel a, a felony. If, if I'm not in the conversation, or class B, if I am in the conversation, this would make it so that if I'm interacting with a police officer, I can record him as long as he can see it's visibly recording. And there, there should be no no uh, hiding behind your interaction with a police officer, so I really don't see where the outrage would come from. Now, what did, did, did he... <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. I think he wants to sound that area. Are you responding to Roger? No. I was oh. going to start on a new thread here. Okay. Conversation. I, I, I just wanted to ask you, when you said that, that it uh, doesn't affect anyone, well, couldn't it affect some kind of court thing if it was video in the wrong situation? And then it would jeopardize yeah. the police or Only if they did anything wrong that they don't want to appear Pardon? on camera. If they did anything wrong that they don't want to appear on camera, I could definitely see that as happening. They would be angry at something showing up for I think that's a problem I have with the bill is that part that it could jeopardize legal and any, uh, I don't know the word, legal, whatever, stuff with the courts. And I think that would be a problem. The truth is never a problem. Having evidence of what actually happened is never a well, problem. Well, if, if you think the police are wrong all the time, I think you would think that. Okay, Representative Britt, what thinking for? Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to follow up on Representative Barubi's question. And uh, this does make a major change in filming police offices. Uh, a police officer could be investigating a fatal crime on a public way, a, a fatal accident, and any citizen can stop and start, and start videotaping that crime, uh, accident scene. So theoretically, someone could see their loved one dead on YouTube before they're notified by the police. Also, a police officer could be dealing with a child in need of services, a minor, and that child could be videotaped by any individual in a public place. Um, it could be a crime scene, and the police officer may not have, <coughs> the person taping may not understand what the police officer is telling them, but he's trying to preserve a crime scene as the individual is coming into that area and contaminating it. And there are other circumstances where this would negatively impact uh, law enforcement and public safety. Thank you, Representative. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I just wanted to confirm the kind of situation that you expressed concern about. Uh, would it not be covered, as uh, Representative Warden said, under uh, Section 1B, but also under Section C4 here, uh, uh, these being uh, uh, that it should not be construed to expand or contract public access to, to uh, in, in, in the case you described, facilities or meetings or records? Would you not be protected in those circumstances by that? Maybe I should ask. Thank you. Uh, Caught the second half. Did you question. express concern about uh, somebody having access to private uh, interactions, perhaps in the uh, function as a welfare officer? Um, it, I, it would appear, and I would like to know if this is true, that Section C4 would, would protect against that kind of intrusion, as would, to some extent, in some circumstances, want to be. I certainly think that's the intent of having that provision in, yeah. in this bill. Yeah, is it specific enough? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my colleague here, Representative Ginsburg, brought up a good point. In number two, which on its surface seems good, it may be 
a fifth flaw. And this would be that any audio or video recording, blah, 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 shall remain the property of its owner. In the event that such property is seized by authorities, a copy of the audio or video recording shall be provided to the owner of the property within 10 days. So I, when I first read that, I was hoping that that meant that they'd have to return a camera. But it doesn't say that. It says they have to return the recording, which in many cases is just a chip nowadays. File. I think it, or a file, a like electronic, file. electronic file. So they can keep the camera indefinitely. I'd like to see this amended to say that it includes the whole uh, the equipment, the audio the device, the audio the device yeah. itself, not just the recording. I think the intent is still is, you know, not too bad, but I think it could create a lot of problems. But, I mean, there's a balance here. We have to be very careful that we're not infringing on other people that are doing things to protect our citizens. So, I mean, you know, there's a fine line, and I have a problem right here. Myself, as an individual, I think I can understand, you know, there's some good to it. There's also some bad to it. So I think it's something that, I, think, I don't know, I think I got a problem with it. I think I'm going to check. Going back to Section 2, uh, I read it a little bit differently. Uh, one thing what this tells me property, the camera, is the property of the owner. It's his. Okay? They're going to take it. They're going to make a copy of it and keep the original. They're going to give me back the copy of the video or the picture with my equipment. That's the way I see it. I, that's I wish that that were clear. I wish that that were the intent. Well, I can't read that into this. Well, I, the first line says that the Audio or video recording in public shall remain the property of its own. The recording. Okay. So, you're not, so you're saying the actual device or the equipment. Wow. The device and the recording. I mean, when I first read it, I, I thought it was fine. The and then yeah. Phil mentioned it. Right. Yeah. Senator Cohen came over to the house when we were in session two weeks ago to tell me how excited he was that he was able to get Glick to work. Well, I'm a foolish young woman, using young as a I don't know why. Yeah. I went home and read Glyph. It doesn't really... It, it was a different situation. Yeah, it talks more about police out in the, in the public park. <coughs> yeah. yeah. And the right of the press. Right, so and Representative... Yeah, well, Marcus, then Representative Welch, who else had their hand up? Representative... Uh, I think this a bill would just create many, many problems for our cities and towns with lawsuits. Mm. Because I don't believe that um, this can be implemented properly, and it is a far fetch from what we started out with, and that we're just asking, we're looking for more trouble than we're going to solve. Representative Welch? And about 40 years ago, uh, <laughs> I was in the Swordman's office, and uh, I was there to return some taxpayer money from a charitable group that we had started in the town. And I had prepared a speech about <coughs> colonial times, neighbors helping neighbors, etc., and so forth, and we didn't want any government interference. The town meeting granted us $1,000, and we got a check for $500 within a week or so. And we had a meeting, and we didn't really know what to do with it. So we put it into a, an interest-bearing account and held it there until the next shoe dropped, which is when they they demanded to see our books. And we had a treasurer, and the treasurer had help, and he couldn't deliver them. So the selectman called the police chief and told him to go over there and seize those books and bring them back. At that point, we called the treasurer and says, don't even let them in the house. They prepared the speech. We had the meeting with the selectman, and there was a tape recorder there. Well, he got the selectman went an author's rocker because he wanted, he couldn't understand why we wouldn't let him see the books. He said, You can see the books anytime you want. Come on over, and we'll open them up for you. It is public record. 
event, we gave them the check back with interest. <coughs> Thank the town profusely for uh, having the confidence in us to, to grant us the money. And we went on about our business until the next day, and I bumped into the same selectman. He says, you had a recording running at that meeting. I says, I recall a tape recorder running, yes. He says, could I get a copy of that? I, I suppose so. So I went and I checked out to find out who it was. <laughs> the recording was from the civics class at the high school. Oh, how mad. <coughs> so they got a real lesson in civics. Correct. But to get back to what we're actually talking about here, I agree with Mark. I think that the device that was used to make the recording should be returned. And I would suggest that we non concur and, and address that. Okay. How do we feel on that? Yeah. Yeah. To go, right, to go back to that same uh, subsection 2, there is no mention of returning the item itself. It says a recording, a copy, is given to the owner. No mention of the item. Do you think the item should be returned? I believe that it should. However, that's not what this says. It says they get to hold it. The only thing the owner gets is a copy of it within 10 days. I think it's an oversampling. What if it's yeah, film? Are they going to give you uh, like a copy of the film from Kodak? That's what it says. Oh, well, this is a, this is a I'm, I'm suggesting maybe there was an oversight on their part and we can correct it. Oversight on the Senate part. To not include the term device or anything. Well, Don't change anything. Uh, uh, if, if I may continue my remarks now, that I agree with what I believe yeah. Representative Welch says about non-confer. Yeah. I think Robbie should be honest. What? <laughs> what did I miss? Mr. Chairman. No, oh, I'm always busy. I'm always busy. Okay. But by returning... A, a Democrat member, like, and I think Phil would be a good member. But by, by returning that, no, Madam Chair, we think that some of that could be used because if there's evidence of some kind of a crime or something, you know, and it says return the recording in 10 days, yeah. well, they may not return the goods because it may be something they need for evidence. That's what it would appear to me if the stuff wasn't returned. And they can get a court order to keep it. Right. For right. evidence. Right. And that's, what, that's available now. But some, right, I realize that, but it's got to come from the request of the person that has it. No, no, come from the police. If the police want to keep that device, they, and, and you know, under the passage of this, all they would have to do is get a court order to keep that for evidence in that case. And I don't think it's, it's a material. I agree with you with non concur. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. and you. Um, I invited a couple of gentlemen here, members of the media, and they drove up from Keene. And Welcome. in particular, number three, because they've had multiple experiences with cameras in courtrooms. And um, I think this three needs a little bit more vetting by somebody who's been in that and has dealt with uh, the sheriffs and the courts. That's the thing. It would be all right if we invite them just to give some brief remarks. Madam Chair, we have a motion pending. So I remember sure. that while well, we vote on the motion, and it might make this whole thing moot if we support the motion, go to a committee or conference. Right. Right. It might we, just expedite everything. So we have a motion that has been made and seconded. Did we, that was something else. No, I made it, and uh, I think Robert okay. seconded. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. You want to play on that? Okay. Representative Welch made a. Motion to not concur. Well, how do we? Yeah, Madam Chair, like I have the front. I have it on the front. Madam Chair, just, just a show of hands. Just a show of hands. And request of committee. Right, you don't need to. Uh, you, the only form you have to pull is on the cover of the bill. Okay. The so we're going to do the Well, there's a show of hands. Well, you need to show of hands to see if. Okay. Right. All those in favor of <laughs> not concurring and asking for a committee of conference. Of course. You have a question? Yes. I think a lot more work needs to be done on that. Well, on that. So, so, you know, too much that's why you've got to go to the committee and Well, I just want to make sure that, you know, He's on okay, the thank you, Madam Chair. I'm sorry. That's all right. All those in favor of none, uh, do you want a hand vote? My dear. Voice vote. 
Yeah. 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 Of nine concurring and asking for a committee of conference. Oh, Kyle, for heaven's sakes. Come on, Kyle. <laughs> Too much in Was that your bill, Kyle? No. Oh. I like the Senate version. Almost in Amherst. Okay. All righty. So we're going to appoint to the committee of conference. Representative Welch. Representative Ginsburg. Representative Wooden and Representative Thompson. Do you want to? Are you too busy? I'll, I'll take his place. No, 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 that's, no, no. That's fine. Okay. I've been on one. That's why you're not. As long as you get on the resume. If it's a good learning experience, I was on two. Thank you. Thank you, madam. I was on, no, Representative Shirley put me on two of them. And, and look where you are today. Yes. Right. <laughs> But you didn't ask me where I buried all the bodies. Ah. Okay. No, no. So Wait, turn off that camera. <laughs> 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 <laughs>